Hello internet, internet. Big Dave here, and I am Chief. It's Friday, and that means it's time to fire up another free-to-play game here on Big Dave is Cheap. This week, we will be playing Realm of the Mad God. This is a cooperative fantasy MMO shooter. That's quite a mouthful, but you could actually uh, add a few things to that, because it's also a roguelike, and some might call it a bullet hell. Uh, now, it's not a Japanese bullet hell in that sense that there's a giant curtain of bullets coming at you, and you have one tiny sliver of daylight to slip through. No, not really like that, but there's a hell of a lot of bullets flying in this game, so I can see why some people have described it as such. Now, this game is set in the fantasy genre, and as I said, it has a lot in common with roguelikes, the main thing being permanent death. Yes, that is right, permanent death. I, however, really like the way that this game handles permadeath. Basically, they make it a part of the game. You have to die in order to unlock additional classes. So it's actually encouraged. I mean, you don't want to die right out of the gate. You want to get in there, accomplish your class quests, get through things, and then die. Start a new character, move on. And that's a really great way to soften the blow of permadeath for a casual player. They understand that it is part of the game, and it's something that's going to have to happen, unlike Diablo 3's hardcore mode, where you will weep when you lose your hardcore character, especially if it's something really dumb, like the phone rings, you look away, and you look back, and you're dead. Which happened to me in Diablo 2, actually, to recall a memory that I had buried very deep within my soul. But enough about my failings in life, let's talk about Realm of the Mad God a little bit more. I don't want to focus too much on the game, I don't want this to be one of my normal videos where I talk about the game for 10 to 15 minutes. I'm going to tell you a little bit about it, share some insight with you into how I enjoy it, and basically just try to put it on display so you can decide whether you want to try it or not. Now, one of the things that I really like about Realm of the Mad God is that there's a web-based version of it that is not dependent on Steam. I initially started playing this game in the web version before it was ever on Steam, and once it came to Steam, I was actually able to link my Steam account to my web account and save all that progress. That's a really, really great and forward-thinking feature on the part of the developer, so a big round of applause on that. Oh, and uh, speaking of the developer, it's Wild Shadow Studios. They were formed in 2008, independent company through and through, and they are doing it right, man. Look at this thing. This is their first game. It is a Flash-based online MMO shooter with fantasy trimmings and roguelike aspects. I mean, somebody over there was mad to think that this would be the first thing that they would do, that they would jump out of the gate with a project like this. I mean, this game is growing. It really is. Uh, and especially after coming to Steam, it has definitely picked up a lot of players. And you will notice that when you play. You're going to go to the Nexus, you're going to see a ton of people waiting there. The Nexus is the central holding area where everybody kind of hangs out on your server before going to the individual instances. So when you actually go out into the world, you're in an instance with up to 85 other people. You can't really fight with the other people, you're fighting against the environment. We call that PvE in the MMO world. And eventually, you'll actually even get a chance to fight the Mad God himself, the titular Mad God. So I actually get a chance to do that in this video, but it goes really, really poorly. I, I managed to escape with my life, but many, many soldiers fall, and we never even get a glimpse of the Mad God. Well, we get killed by his minions. I managed to wuss out and warp back to the Nexus after getting separated from the group. But uh, it's an interesting thing that happens. I mean, basically... When he is available, you are transported to his domain and everybody else, up to 85 people, will come with you and there will be chaos, absolute chaos. You'll see a little bit of it just as we start out into his fortress. A lot of people, a lot of shooting, people dying left and right, a lot of things happening. It's a really, really interesting concept. I love what they've done with this game and I continue to play it to this day. If I have five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever, jump on it, have a little fun and then go on about my business. It's just a wonderful time. Really, really a wonderful time. And I would recommend that you guys take a look at this. I mean, it doesn't even take up any space on your hard drive. What a freaking, you know, 10 megs or something, 100 megs. That's what this game is, 100 megs on your hard drive or play it in a browser window and it doesn't even take up anything. Really encourage you guys to check it out. Continue to enjoy the footage and we're going to move on to other things. Now, Free to Play Friday is still a little rough around the edges. It's it's shapeless right now. I'm trying to 
trying to shape it. I'm trying to chip away the excess, and I'm trying to get that piece of granite down to a beautiful big titty sculpture. And I want you guys to tell me what you think. Right now, the current idea for the format is spend about the first five minutes talking about the game, and then spend the next ten or so minutes talking with you guys. Whatever might come up, uh, vloggy stuff, if I want to talk about my feelings, won't that be wonderful? No, that's actually probably never going to happen, but if I just want to talk to you guys sort of out of character, just not talking about something super serious, just chat you up, maybe we'll do that. If I want to pass on news, which is kind of a lot of what this week is going to be, we'll do that. But uh, it's just going to be that sort of a free-flowing show. So the front half, we'll talk about the game. The back half, we'll talk about whatevs. I'm never going to say whatevs again, just so you guys know. So, this week, let me just start things off by saying this show is intended to replace the Weekend Roundup. However, the Weekend Roundup was supposed to happen last Sunday. Let me tell you words that should never escape your lips as a human being, alright? This, this is a pro tip for life, alright? This should never happen. This scenario right here that I'm about to act out for you in a radio drama, okay? Huh. Well, the shrimp smells a little bit off. Eh, what the hell. I'll chance it. Yeah, never do that. It's not worth it. I, it doesn't matter how good the shrimp is, if it's a if it's a delicious scampi or mixed in with an Alfredo pasta or in my case butterflied and breaded. Just just don't do it. Don't chance it. Crustaceans, prawns, these sorts of things that come from the sea, they are merciless mistresses. Is they will do things to your body. Uh, which are not natural. So, last Sunday, if you follow me on Twitter, you already know what happened. I had a bit of the food poisoning. I had taken my mother out the previous uh, Wednesday for a nice dinner. Just, hey, mom, what's going on? You know, you don't get to see your mom as much when you're in your 20s and 30s. You never really think about that. And sometimes you just want to have a nice dinner with your mom. And we went out, and I had a little bit of leftovers and brought it home. And then Saturday evening, I thought, hmm, those only sat out in the car for six hours. I... I could, I could eat those, you know. I got them in the refrigerator relatively soon. I'm, I'm going to do it. And yes, they smelled off. And yes, I ate them anyway. And I paid the price. So while this show is intended to replace the Weekend Roundup, it was not intended to replace the Weekend Roundup last week. However, I'm going to go ahead and say that the Weekend Roundup is done. I will do any sort of rounding up on this show, and that'll just end things. Plus, it frees me up because I have a really tight... Saturday night right now when I when I do the recording usually record the roundup on Saturday night Sunday morning That's a really tight time for me right now I'm trying to do a lot of recording in that window and it would really help me to free that up I can easily do this show on a Thursday night or Friday morning to get it up on Friday and uh, Moving the weekend roundup just out completely will be very very nice While we're talking about this sort of stuff logistics. Let me tell you right now this weekend, in fact, tomorrow, is my wife's birthday. Uh, she is a lovely and beautiful woman, the mother of my son, and she's been doing a fantastic job with him. Uh, she elected to stay at home with him and has been just doing a wonderful job, and, and I absolutely love this woman. I'm, I'm crazy about her, and the, the son that we have is freaking awesome. Um, I, I'll introduce you to him sometime. But uh, he's a great kid, and she does a great job with him, uh, but she's been doing it for about 20 months now. <laughs> 21 months, uh, pretty much uninterrupted. So for her birthday weekend, we're sending her off to a hotel to uh, to have some me time, some some mommy time without the boy, and uh, that means that I will be with the kid uh, pretty much the whole weekend, kind of just tending to him, you know, the sort of things that children need, basically just keeping him from murdering himself unintentionally. And that means that I'm just not going to have the opportunity to actually record videos because I'm going to have to be up with the kid. He's going to, he still doesn't sleep through the night. He's, sometimes kids are great. Sometimes they're not as great, but uh, he does wake up a lot during the night. So uh, I will be busy with him and uh, busy with just wrangling him during the days. So uh, not going to be any videos next week, most likely. I will do something, just don't plan on anything. You know, this week... I had a nice video release schedule, I hit my two for the week, felt really good, and uh, that's not going to happen this coming week. So, uh, you know, this is just something that is not even, uh, it's not even on the radar when it comes to considering things. 
internet videos that like 50 people watch versus the happiness of my wife. Yeah, that's not even a contest. So uh, you guys will understand. I mean, I know you guys are great. You understand uh, that life exists and many of you live one. So uh, you can definitely relate. So no planned videos next week, but I'll, I'll end up throwing something out there for certain. And this won't affect uh, free to play Fridays. So no problems. I do all of my video content creation for the week on Friday and Saturday. And then that stuff goes up during the following week. I do free to play Friday on Thursday. So that's kind of how that works out. If give you guys a sort of an update on my new schedule of how I'm working things these days, uh, I gave up the idea of actually doing free to play Fridays ahead of time because I wanted to be, I wanted it to be a relative series, a relevant series, relevant to uh, what's actually going on. So that means it has to be recorded fresh every single week and it shall be right. Moving on. Uh, you guys need to head over to big Dave is cheap dot com right after this video i have an article up over on the site which details a lot of stuff that's going on right now this will include the because we may sales event which ends today so head over to because we may.com snoop around find a game that you want and purchase it remember this is the event where developers are lowering their prices on certain digital distribution sites just because they can and that's a really great thing. They are uh, definitely trying to get the word out about the different sites that they like to use to sell their products, be it Steam, Desura, Gamersgate, uh, Indievania, Indie City, whatever it is. They are uh, trying to spread the word about those places. And always remember, if you buy it directly from the developer, they are generally going to make a lot more money when you do that. So look into that if at all possible. I would recommend Scorgasm, two bucks. And I would recommend The Binding of Isaac if you don't already own it. It's only $2. Buy it. There is a potential to spend hundreds of hours in The Binding of Isaac and never get bored. It's a wonderful game. It has just got an expansion that has increased its content by 50%. 3 bucks for that expansion. For $5, the regular price of The Binding of Isaac right now, you can have the game and the expansion. <sighs> Why haven't you bought this? Why, why are you still watching this video? Why haven't you gone and bought The Binding of Isaac? I don't know. Well, if you're still here, there are also a lot of bundles going on. A lot of bundles. I think it's about six in total if we count the new bundle, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. But in the article, I detail five game bundles and one music bundle. The game music bundle is amazing. You really have to see it. If you haven't seen previous bundles, they are really, really great. I mean fantastically great. The stuff that's in there is just wonderful. Uh, I would recommend the George and Jonathan album that's in there. It is called uh, Beautiful Lifestyle. It is one of those CDs that I just put on. It's not my kind of music at all. It's not the sort of stuff that I sit around listening to, but it's one of those CDs that's just so sort of happy and upbeat. And it's the kind of thing that I can just put on and kill people to for hours on end. And it really makes me happy uh, doing that. It's sort of kind of demented when you think about it when I say it that way. It's kind of weird, kind of sick, but I would definitely recommend getting the game music bundle. Check out the post for all the details on all those different bundles. I give some thoughts on each individual bundle. Also, what else is going on? Worms Reloaded, free to play on Steam this weekend. Hopefully you have seen that. Worms is definitely one of my favorite uh, piss off your friends simulators of all time. When we used to play this back in the day, the original Worms, uh, somebody always got mad. Somebody always got pissed off. Uh, but that actually kind of made it better because it's sort of a ruthless game. I mean, you know, it, it is, it's a hard game to play uh, with, with friends sometimes, but it's also an amazing game to play with friends. So uh, I definitely recommend that you guys check out Worms Reloaded. And if you enjoy it, it is on sale as it is always with the free-to-play weekends on Steam. And finally, I'll give you some basic information about a new service that Gamersgate has unveiled. It's called Void, and it is a... Hmm, it's an ad-driven free game service. Basically, they will give you a game for free if you're willing to watch an ad before playing it. It's definitely interesting. I want to watch it grow. I want to see where it goes and what it becomes. Uh, but right now there's a limited selection of games, a ton of indie games, uh, not a whole lot of high profile stuff. I saw Painkiller on there. Uh, the original Risen is on there. You know, there's some other stuff on there. Uh, I think it is a really, it's a really interesting thing for indie developers. I think it's all going to depend on the cut, on how it's done. If it's worth it to have your game in there, uh, if the uh, if the split on the ad revenue is fair to the developer, then I think you're going to see a lot of indie games uh, 
put themselves into this sort of service because it's a great idea on the surface. I really want to see how it turns out. I'm really going to watch it. In fact, I'm going to play some Avoid games this weekend, and I'm going to try to get enough information together to make a video for you guys. However, if you want to actually uh, try it out, just go ahead and try it out. Uh, now, of course, you guys know, busy weekend, so that don't expect that Void video anytime soon, but I'm going to just download a few Void games over the weekend and uh, try to mess with them when I have a bit of downtime. Uh, lucky thing about babies is that they get tired eventually, uh, tired of screaming and tired of hitting you in the face and biting you on the, the arm and hand and leg and foot, and uh, they eventually sleep, so... I might get a chance to uh, check out some Void games. Uh, but yeah, just check out the service if you're interested. It's right up front on Gamersgate. If you have an account with Gamersgate, if you've ever purchased anything from them, you're already ready to go with the service, so check it out. Now, the elephant in the room, the thing that is not featured in my article, because it happened right after I posted my article, the Humble Indie Bundle number 5. Uh, it's amazing. <laughs> my mouth is uh, is agape. My jaw is still on the floor. The quality of this bundle is just beyond words. Uh, unsurprisingly, some of these games aren't really that indie. Uh, I've seen a little bit of backlash in the community uh, complaining three of these games did have major publishers behind them. Uh, and of course, Double Fine is not an indie studio. Uh, but I think all these games have an indie aesthetic to them. Uh, they have that sort of... They have indie chops. Can I say that? Let me put it that way. They have indie chops, you know? Uh, they, they've got that indie feel. I mean, Psychonauts, obviously, is a published game. It's a major title. Uh, but it's inspired a lot of indie developers. There are a lot of guys who would put Psychonauts on the short list of games that inspired them. And uh, there's no reason that it shouldn't be here, because even if it's not an indie game per se, uh, it has it has indie chops. I'm, I'm, look, just so you guys know, I'm copywriting that phrase, trademark, indie chops. I've got that domain right, I'm getting it right now on GoDaddy. There it is. Okay, indiechops.com. And uh, I just I, the movement is going to happen. I see it happening, indie chops. So uh, you guys go out there and you say that. Use that phrase a lot. Uh, all 50 of you who are going to watch this video. Use that phrase a lot. Indie Chops, Indie Chops. Um, but but yeah, so these aren't all exactly indie games, but honestly, who cares? Uh, you know, Indie Gala got into the same kind of thing. Their recent bundle, the one that's going on right now, not 100% indie either. Um, indie's kind of becoming popular. It, it's... It, and this happened with independent music as well. Uh, we are in danger of the word indie uh, being redefined for us. And much as much in the way that grunge was redefined in, in my youth. It's, it's an interesting place to be right now. But whether or not you want to have that discussion, I, I don't really care if you want to have it. I just don't want to participate in it. I think this is an amazing bundle. You must own these games. Bastion is my game of 2011. It was my number one uh, game of 2011, uh, which reminds me, I do need to finish that game. Uh, Amnesia the Dark Descent, I own, but will probably never play. Uh, in fact, I own all these games. Uh, at least I think I own Super Brothers Swords and Sorcery. Um, I'll have to check that. I may not own that game, actually. But if you don't own these games, even if you don't own one of these games, it's worth it. Um, I would buy this bundle for the soundtrack alone. So, yeah, the soundtrack to Bastion alone would would definitely sell this bundle to me. So, take a look at the Humble Bundle 5. It is amazing. I will not be doing any video content on it because these are all big games that I couldn't really cover well. Uh, Super Brothers and Limbo, I probably could do. Uh, I'm not going to play Amnesia. Not on video, certainly. Not with a face scare cam with a, the lights turned down and... Nope, nope, just not going to be one of those guys. So, the last thing I want to hit on is, really quickly, uh, live streaming. It is something that I want to do, it's something that I want to happen, but right now I'm concentrated on getting the video content on YouTube to be regular and predictable. And once that is in hand, then I will worry about live streaming. Uh, right now I'm struggling sometimes, I'm having to squeeze in video creation uh, into odd pockets of time and 
just I'm trying to get everything done so that my video creation for the week on YouTube is streamlined and works with my life and then I will worry about live streaming. It's something I'm going to do. I have done it. I've streamed a couple times. I've, I've seen the weakness of my setup. Uh, I know that I can't stream high-end games, so I will stream a lot of indie stuff, a lot of smaller games, older games, retro stuff, all that. Um, you know, it's, it's just going to be something that I flip on. When I happen to be playing, turn on the live stream. And that's just going to kind of be how it is. All right, I've got to stop myself here. I got to stop myself from talking. The last thing I want to say is thank you guys. Thank you so much for watching my videos, for commenting, for liking, and all that stuff. I really, really love it. I appreciate you guys from the bottom of my heart. It really encourages me when you guys uh, interact with me. If you see me on Steam, send me a message. Don't worry about interrupting me, because frankly, I don't sign on to my friends list unless I'm open to having messages. So. If I'm in a game, whatever, say hello. We don't have to have an in-depth conversation. You can just say hello, whatever you want to do. I'm just a dude like you. I am a person who wants to play games with you. I know that I'm, I'm no celebrity, so you guys are not intimidated by my celebrity. I just mean, you know, say hello to me the same way you'd say hello to anybody that you have on your friends list uh, that you like and you want to interact with. Uh, I kind of need attention, apparently. That really makes me sound like I need a lot of attention, but uh, just say hello. Maybe we'll find a game that we can play, something we have in common. I would really enjoy it. All right, guys, I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.